Spiral from the Book of Saw. Spiral is a Saw spin-off movie. There have been like seven or eight Saw movies, I think. And then there was a spin-off movie called Jigsaw. And this is another spin-off movie. And Chris Rock, who is the star of this movie, kind of made this happen because he's a fan of the prior Saw films. So he kind of had this idea and he pitched it to a studio and they were like, yeah, sure, let's make it. Now with Chris Rock, as you know, he, he's a funny guy. He does a lot of stand-up comedy. He does comedy movies and he's just kind of got one of those, those voices that's funny. Like when he says stuff, it's just automatically funny because it's Chris Rock. So therefore it's kind of hard to get to grips with him, you know, sort of being the star of this horror film. Because it's Chris Rock, you know, he's, he's just a funny guy. You know, I always know him as the voice of the zebra in Madagascar. And at times, especially during the early parts of the movie, that's all I could hear was the zebra from Madagascar. And to be honest, his best bits in this movie were when he was saying funny stuff, like uh, little bits of dialogue he has with other characters. You know, stuff that did make me laugh, but it's, it's no discredit to how he is in the rest of the film. He puts in a, a really good performance here. Something different from what we're used to seeing him in, but he was he was solid. Samuel L. Jackson is also listed on the poster as kind of like, you know, the second main character, but you don't really get a whole lot of Samuel L. Jackson in this movie. Maybe like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes overall. It, it's not a whole lot. But with Samuel L. Jackson, even when he's in bad movies, and that's not me saying this is a bad movie, but, you know, whenever he is in a bad movie, he doesn't put in a bad performance. He's just Samuel L. Jackson. You know, he's just... He's just a win all the time. If you've got him in your movie, you know you're going to get a good performance from him. Nothing outstanding in this, but it's Samuel Jackson. It's always a pleasure to have Samuel Jackson. So I won't go into spoilers here, of course, but the plot for this movie kind of involves a jigsaw copycat. Someone who is taking inspiration from Jigsaw using his traps and ideas, you know, to punish people that supposedly deserve it. Of course, it has to be a copycat type thing because otherwise it's not a Saw movie if it hasn't got these disgusting, horrible contraptions that, you know, just sort of torture people in the worst possible way in their final moments. And those were the highlight of the movie. Like, even though it is repulsive, <laughs> some of the stuff you see, it's also when it's happening, you're like, oh, we're about to see some shit right now. Of course, that doesn't mean I wasn't wincing, you know, throughout those scenes, my face was a bit like this. And the traps were pretty gory, uh, pretty imaginative as well. You know, we got some good uh, variety of ways to punish people. And I like the way the traps link to the victim in terms of they're punishing them. You know, they might choose a specific body part based on something they've done in the past involving that body part. You get the idea, it's, it's cynical, it's disgusting, but it's also fantastic. Now for me, the first hour was pretty strong. It's not a long movie, it's only an hour and a half. The first hour is strong, you know, It's it keeps you kind of intrigued. You wonder where it's going, you're kind of looking forward to the next trap, you wonder who the killer is. And Chris Rock, he certainly, I think, carries this movie well. It's not like it's all on him, but he certainly keeps you invested. He's a character you can get invested in and get interested in. But when it comes to the ending, it didn't seem like they had enough time to really do what they needed to do. And when it comes to the big reveal, it involved a whole lot of exposition and it felt really rushed and you're just sort of taking it all in. You're like, okay, 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 this is happening. And with the reveal, the twist, it felt a little bit cheap, a little bit lazy, kind of felt like, well, okay, I guess like it, it, it kind of makes sense, but it also, you know, it's just one of those twists they put in there. It wasn't really hinted at all that much or it's, it's not something you would have guessed because they never gave you the clues to guess it, and I think when it comes to like uh, movies like this, where it's sort of crime and it involves detectives, it's nice if they leave like little breadcrumbs just every now and then, so that the audience, if they're very you know keen-eyed, can be like, oh, maybe it's that, you know, they can get an idea for it. But it's one of those twists where it's just like, you would not have known it was that, so they just throw it at you, and you're like, well, yes, it's surprising, but it's also not that interesting in a sense because you're just like, well, how the hell was anyone meant to know that, like? By that logic, you can choose any twist you like. And you know, throughout the movie, the style was a little bit kind of random, you know, it's some strange editing, some strange cuts. And on top of that, it is pretty loud at times, this movie, uh, and it doesn't really feel like it, it takes a break. There's not a whole lot of downtime. You kind of get a little downtime at the beginning, but then after that, it's kind of full throttle. Would it be nice to just have a little breather? But overall, this is a pretty decent movie. I think it's kind of what you expect. You know, they've made like, eight or nine Saw films. I don't know if this is the 10th or something. Bit like Fast and Furious in the sense that you kind of know what you're getting into when you go to see this movie. You're not going to go watch an Oscar-worthy picture here. But even so, you kind of go in with a bit of hope, a bit of optimism, like, oh, I 
hope this is going to be something good, something special. What if it, you know, surpasses my expectations? It didn't quite do that, but it didn't disappoint me in any way. I, I was, you know, a happy customer after leaving that cinema. But they could have done better. I think they could have added maybe another 15 minutes, just make the film a bit longer, space it out a bit more, maybe leave some more breadcrumbs, like I said, so we can sort of try and figure the mystery out for ourselves because it's kind of just, we don't know who's doing what and then you just told everything at the end. So yeah, a bit of better pacing, make the movie a bit longer, I think that would have helped it overall. But overall, it is a decent watch uh, and don't worry if you haven't seen the Saw films and you're interested in going to see this. I've only seen Saw 1, but even then that's not like important knowledge to go and watch this film. It is a spin-off, it's kind of telling its own story. You will get little links and hints, to, you know, to the prior movies, there's probably some things I didn't pick up on because I haven't seen, you know, the whole series of Saw films. But it's easy to grasp what's going on in this movie and it's easy to just catch on and sort of get invested in the story and what's going on, yeah. This is a good popcorn movie. Got my popcorn here, I didn't finish it, I got a large. It's a lot of popcorn. If the movie was two and a half hours, I would have been able to finish it, but it's too short. But you know, go to the cinema, get some popcorn, get yourself a Tango Ice Blast. Watch this with a friend, watch this with a family member. You can have a good time. You know, it's pretty gruesome at times. The story's fun, Chris Rock's awesome. So yeah, Spiral, worth watching at the cinema, but probably something you're not gonna buy on Blu-ray afterwards or re-watch again out of your own choice. But there we have it. I'm glad cinemas are open again. We're finally getting some new movies on the big screen. Obviously we've got new movies, but they've all been straight to streaming. So it's nice to actually go out see a movie, have a think about it, enjoy yourself. And we've got more on the way. There are a few more horror films on their way soon. There's The Unholy and then there's A Quiet Place Part 2. Two horror star films that are coming out soon. I can't wait to see them, can't wait to review them, can't wait to share my thoughts with you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this review and I will see all of you in the next video.